Hey, 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 everyone. It is I again. It's Otoloko again. And I am uh, this minute talking with Nick Kellett, CEO and founder of Deckable. So I'm going to go and ask the question What the heck is Deckable? <laughs> Deckable, wow. <laughs> Deckable, Deckable is the app that your phone has been waiting for. Ooh, um, your phone, I love that. Your phone, it, your phone is card deck shaped. So it looks like a card deck. And now it actually acts like one. Yeah. Deckable, we've basically built this amazing card deck app that gives you a truly tactile experience of being able to draw from one or many decks to do mixed readings, to do spreads, to do journaling to do card sorts all of everything you could do with a card deck you can no, do no, in no. Deckable. everything you could do with 200 card decks or 500 you, well that's decks. true <laughs> that's true yeah <laughs> true, we forget true. that right or i just, love the i you know, uh, and and what happens is we only have two here so <laughs> i know and i'm well i'm i'm living a, a as a digital nomad so i don't even have a full deck with me i think so yeah i'm purely digital <laughs> Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm just sharing the the um, the tick. Some people are saying they they, they don't see us. Um, oh, but it's just because they haven't refreshed their pages. So, um, okay. So, uh, what can one do in Deckable? How does this function? Um, yeah, basically, it's uh, it's an app. <laughs> it's it's an iOS and Android app, which means you install it from the Apple Store or the Google Play Store. Um, not too far off, we will actually have a desktop version, so you'll be able to run it in your browser. Ooh, because, bigger you know, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there's a lot of people who are, you know, you think you hear everyone's mobile first, and, and there's all these set of people like, I don't like mobile. And there's a lot of people who use <laughs> desktop, so we will have a desktop version. We've actually had a desktop version working, but we just haven't, you know, released that as a production product yet. So it's also, always been, I, I wanted always to say been our vision. I, I some, some of our speakers realized that if it's an app, it means it can go on your tablet, so you can have big, big oh, yeah. cards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Like <laughs> you can have it, it runs on these guys. And the cool thing is, like, even Instagram, if you run Instagram on here, it doesn't do anything fancy, it doesn't even stretch to fill, fill the screen. But Deckable is truly responsive, so you can, Ooh, you can that. use it like it's just a, it's beautiful on the tablet. It's like I've told a bunch of people to go and get tablets that don't have them, and they've gone, oh, my God, yeah, I love it. Yeah, so. I'm actually considering buying my first tablet ever because of that. Yeah. So right, right. I hear you. So yeah. your, your, your talk was named a very fancy title, which I re literally forgot. Shuffle oh, yeah. your world. Embrace digital. Elevate, elevate your readings and take your cards anywhere. So do you yeah. have a um, do you want me to shut up and so you can talk or do you want me to ask you questions? So we can do Oh no, I can I can I can dive into my talk. I'm not sure how tightly I followed the title, but I'm I'm basically just gonna um, share my thoughts and feelings about why cards matter. And you know, I kind of I, was, I sat through your your keynote and Tonya uh, joining you as well. And I just to me, cards are just so significant. And it, and it seems so upsetting to me that cards are so much in the minority. Like, we're on a mission to put a card deck in everyone's pocket. Because right now, I don't. I think the percentage of people who love card decks are are pretty small. But they they love, as you know, and, and have like you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 plus decks, right? So it's, we do. Uh, we, do. <laughs> we do. We do. We do. We do. We do. Yeah. But our life so, is not simplified by having all those decks. So. <laughs> No. Well, you're, you, you've constantly got this problem, which is which deck do you take with you? Do you have to choose? Do you have to predict your needs for the day? And gone. It's like gone is that need, right? Because now you can you can have every deck you own in your pocket and take it with you anywhere. So it's like it's like we've, we've become addicted to Spotify because it's any song we want, anytime, anywhere in our pocket, right? And now, now our decks can do the same. So. Which is great. And, and yeah. Um, so we have Callie here. So you can't see the comments, maybe I can. So Callie right. says she wants a deckable t-shirt. Merch, we okay. want merch. Yeah, yeah, we can we can do merch. <laughs> <laughs> we, are, we haven't done merch yet, but we should. We totally should. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'm I'm really happy to say that you know you can go uh anyone who's listening to this, you can go and experiment 
with uh, Decabo because there are, um, so first of all, uh, Otoloco uh, has created a deck that we uploaded into Decabo. That is the yep. speaker the speakers deck, so you can go and play with that one. It's free for everyone. And you will get a message uh, from me on Monday explaining how to retrieve your decks, uh, your free uh, um, speaker decks. Um, and so you can play with that one. Plus, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, Decable is, is gifting a Raider White to a black and white Raiders White to uh, as uh, a beginning when you create. Any, your yeah, game. anyone anyone who signs up now, that's actually going away. But if you sign up right now, you get a Raider White uh, deck for free. Yeah, that's absolutely right. I have that one, so I'm really happy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you have that one for sure, and you have the the speakers deck, and you can start playing with it and really yeah. see how much how different it is than any other it's not your typical right. pull a card app um and that is really difficult to explain actually but it's it, it's um it's an experience it's it you know you can it, do it, so much more that you said the word experience i'm going to be talking about experience in my talk but i i've had so many phone calls zoom calls with people who've said exactly that. Oh my God, this isn't what I was expecting. There is no way to tell people what I'm gonna show you is, is exceptional and beyond your wildest dreams because everyone just goes, yeah. <laughs> Cause you know, people t tend to disbelieve people who say that sort of stuff. So I just, I, I've, I don't, I wish I had an answer to that. You know, the best answer is word of mouth. Yeah. Word of mouth. Like, you know, like how do we, how did we get to hear about Oda Loco was, you know, was because um, I think it's three or four of our uh, creators already were on, on the speaker list. And when you'd finalized the 21, you, you were aware of Deckable. And, uh, you know, that was how we got to hear of you, right? And that's how Absolutely. we, we yeah. first spoke. I think now yeah, we have yeah. nine. I think it's, I think it's nine. Speakers, speakers mentioned Deckable, and I thought, okay, I have to master my courage and go and talk to this Nick person. First of all, I have a deck, so maybe, maybe I can get yeah. my deck up there. Uh, and then now, as you were saying, I think there's nine decks from uh, all, all our auto local speakers. Uh, mm. We have, yeah, some anyone who's got a deck basically on yeah. auto local is uh, in deckable. And I'm so happy. Let me just add this before I completely try to shut up, which is difficult for me. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to try it. Um, I'm so happy because one of the things that I really wanted with auto loco was for it to be something into the future that we take the cards into the future into tomorrow that we reach also for younger generations for people who do have phones and sure. who cannot survive without them basically uh, and so we also go into the future and we undust undust the tarot for instance right, all the old right, cards. Right. it's not this gypsy gypsy in the caravan uh, it's for everyone, and right. your um, invention is exactly that. So thank you, thank yeah, you. Yeah, pleasure, 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 pleasure. Into the future. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean, just honestly, thank you for being. You have been the most amazing supporter, and I am truly and eternally grateful to you. And uh, it's been significant to have this, to organize an event with you. You've just been a, a, a superstar. Superstar. Thank you. You too, actually. <laughs> you too, actually. The support is amazing, you know, on both sides. And I think yeah. I'm so happy for some of our speakers. Maybe some of their decks were not available on print anymore. Right. Uh, like, okay, do I have to print that again? You know, independent printing is right. is hell. Oh. Right. You know, I've been through there. It's expensive, it's complicated. So for creators, uh deckable is an is an amazing way. You know, I have in my head another three decks that I want to create. But <laughs> printing them is like Oh, you know, this one, the one that I printed, I knew that I was doing it in a small scale, that I, I could right. handle that. But I yeah. know that it can never grow big like this. Right. Whereas now it's on deckable and it can grow big, which you know, you know Canva an has done commission for artists. Canva has done an amazing job because they took the Illustrator Adobe Creative Suite audience and expanded it by a hundredfold, right? So literally the now people that could create a deck now is in the in the in the millions and millions, right? Because yep. of because of Canva. And I just believe Deckable can do that for creatives. Like we can put artists 
our mission is to have artists making be able to make a living from decable that's Not me. that's yeah that's my <laughs> most exciting like when where can i come welcome welcome on stage at the decable annual user conference and 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 celebrate people who've made a full living from decable that will be like joyous and I think, you know, that there's, one, there's one thing that we were, let's go into the, the nitty gritty details. Um, there's one thing that people don't realize is that in Deckable, each card has more than what two sides. <laughs> and this is, this is the thing that is kind of mm, opening so many windows and doors in my head. Like, I want to do this. I know. So, um, what do you mean? I don't I don't have to go and find my guidebook and look up the cards anymore? No, you don't. You no. just have to go to side three and poof, here comes the guidebook. And guess what? There's a side four and side five and a side six. And you can I even add, you can imagine having a, a video, a whole conference <laughs> of cards. Uh, and, and you can imagine having audio. I would love to have each card. I've been dreaming yeah. of playlists with my decks. Right. You know, each right. card would have a song. Uh, and I'm ac actually I'm working with a musician because I would love wow. to have uh, wow. cards that have a, a soundtrack. Uh, yeah. And then you know it's Amazing. a movie, it's a it's a book, it's a course or a platform, uh, um, right, right. a program. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's just there is no limit to the imagination of what a deck can become. And when you realize that we support transparency, we actually crush the idea of a card being a rectangle. Like, now you're you killing can... me. Go again. And <laughs> <bring that. laughs> so you can literally have any shape as a card. I mean, classically, you know, landscape, portrait, rectangles, you can have squares, you can have hexagons, but you can just have shapes like a rock or a flower or a vase or whatever you want. Yeah. That's okay. my mm, yeah, yeah. More, 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 um, um, <laughs> Mind-boggling ideas, right. then. Artists are there. Somewhere in here, I better get on with my slides. I'm going to race through them at 10,000 miles an hour at this point. Sure. Okay. okay. So let me oh, let me share, let me go for the screen sharing thing, so you can explain okay. visually, because All right. is very visual. Yeah, totally. And I'm I'm starting off with a kind of run through of of, of the visions of of card decks generally. So you seeing that? We good? Yeah. Hope so. Yes. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to whiz through these at a, at a, at a pace because uh, I'm time limited. So I'm a big fan of card decks and I, I've been into card decks for three years. I have an embarrassingly large collection of over a, probably 150 decks. And I was curious why card decks have taken off so much. And, and this is my best distillation. I'm not going to read them off to you, but you can follow these through. But these, there's so much rocket fuel driving the card deck industry. And that's what's exciting to me is that, you know, there are some people who don't really use cards because they don't understand them or they think they're to this or to that and they're they're just wrong but we it's a case of us all being welcoming and educational and teaching people and bringing people into the card deck community which is why i was so such a, a, a vivid supporter of of the event because i think it's so wonderful to um to talk about cards in general not just tarot and oracle um and so what i've really concluded is we're all in the moving business um, and, you know, if you're in the personal growth or self-reflection, any kind of self-care, we're in the moving business. And what are we moving? Uh, we're obviously moving houses. We're moving people's emotions, right? Um, there's a whole set of decks on Deckable about emotions. But here's an example. I could be moving from being trapped to being hopeful by using an emotions deck, uh, being aware of what my emotions are, being able to name them, locate them, increase my vocabulary, uh, all sorts of fun things like that. We're also in the the business of moving beliefs and i say together because you know you can do this yourself or you can do this with a coach or you can do it with a deck right or with your therapist or whatever you want cards bring you and give you the tools to do self-inspection um so i love i love values decks you know that shift our beliefs because we all often have uh beliefs that are anchored in the past that don't serve us anymore and it's time sometimes to put those down and that takes effort uh, we're also in the business of moving thoughts i love this deck from um uh, Dr. Robert Roland Smith, and you know, you should change to fit me. Oh no, maybe I'm ready to listen now. Maybe I'm recognizing that isn't true anymore. So how changing thoughts is fantastic, and that's a deck full of um, systemic sentences like those or statements. So we're all we're all we're all um, you know 
moving, but we're moving while on the move, right? Because <laughs> with Deckerball, very clever, I know, I like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're moving on the move because, well, that's when we have our spare moments, right? Um, you know, we all carry this device with us at all times, our mobile phone, it's fully charged because that's how we pay for things, that's where we identify ourselves, etc. right? And now, instead of doom scrolling on Facebook and Instagram and email and messages, you can grab a mindful moment and um, do a reading and journal and meditate on Deckable. That's an option. Um, and then, you know, one of the things when you're moving, uh, you recognize change is, is pain. sometimes it can be painful. So even accept that you need to change can be challenging. Um, so how do we change? Well, we, we think the answer lies uh, in mindful awareness. Um, and, and just connecting with those moments in your lives. And that's, you know, there's lots of mindfulness decks on Deckable. I absolutely adore this deck. It's only, ex it's exclusively available on Deckable. It isn't actually in print yes. at this point. Yeah, it's abs and the person who wrote it is, oh my God, uh, Shalini is just stunning. <laughs> she, she lives and breathes every essence and ounce of integrity as a mindful um, practitioner. She's, she's special. Uh, and so that's, the, you know, but the other thing we do is daily practice, right? It, we, we make changes by turning up every day and doing a little bit, a little bit more and a little bit more. And we look back at what we've done and we go, oh my God, look how far I've come. And that's how we form habits, right? And habits are, are really special. And I, I, this guy, Nirayal, wrote this amazing book, Indistractable, to teach us how not to be distracted in life. And that is available as a deck on Deckable. Um, but habits are really important. Take it very seriously. Turning up every day makes a difference. That's how we do that. And then the other, the other piece of the secret sauce is connect with spirit. Whatever your spirit is called, however you, we're all energetic beings and the energy we connect with um, as, we, as we draw from a card. And I picked two of the most, two beautiful decks, uh, both hand painted. And it just, uh, they stuck with me. Like, when I found these, these decks arrived on Deckable one day and I looked at them and I, I, one of the creators I knew, the other one I had never met before, but it was, it's stunning. I, and, and I have the pleasure, I call, I don't call this work, but I get to meet creators all day long with their stunning ideas. Uh, so I think these are beautiful decks. And I think one of the things I want to really drive home is, is a message that words, the words we speak and, and the dreams we have shape our reality. We really can transform how we feel and how we think and how we act by the words we use and, and, and the dreams we have. And I've previously can tell an example of how I used to like use very masculine words of battle, fight, struggle. And I noticed that and I, I really stopped using those words. And now I, I, I'll have dance, I'll, I'll dance with a challenge. I'll, I'll playfully get curious and uh, you know explore the idea of something that's, that's an obstacle in front of me rather than calling it a challenge or a fight or a battle. And, you know, I strongly suggest, you know, it's really important to pick your words carefully. I love this deck, Supposing. These are all little emoticons, um, all dressed up and, and with uh, an amazing photo scenery, as you can see here. Uh, it's very cute to, to reflect your emotions and how you're feeling. And, you know, pick your words wisely and, and dare to dream big, right? It's, uh, these decks can really help you just little daily practice of turning up and picking picking your words and then following through with that i think is really important um and as i you mentioned experiences on the intro there and and you know we really think about experiences a lot with deckable because experiences move people but you know more importantly than moving people experiences help us remember um i only saw this statistic maybe a month ago two months ago and it's just blown my mind you know, 10%, we remember 10% of what we read, but 90% of what we experience. So, you know, it's really important that we create experiences because that's how we anchor things. If we're going to change, we have to remember it. We have to build it into our daily life. We have to put it into practice and we have to experience the feelings that we want to remember. Um, and I think we're going through it. I know <laughs> we're going through an experiential shift. We we spent 20 years as technology has come to being consumers. So we listen, we watch, we read, but we're potentially, potentially a little bit tired of that. And, and more of us and more of us are wanting to participate rather than yes. consume, right? Um, Have conversations I, rather than- I put those the right, 
I've, they, you that slide, that, the way, yeah. <laughs> I've got the wrong way around. I tell you, that just, I've just spotted that as I'm telling you. So well, good, for, good for paying attention there, I said. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but still, um, you know, I, I think it's really, yeah. it's really huge point. So despite right, right. the slide being wrong, I think you have, for me, it's really very visible that we are now <laughs> entering the age of conversation right. rather than right. lecturing. So exactly. It's the old play. teacher talking to down to, to the student yeah. is not good. Yeah, absolutely. And then um, in addition to that, I think there's also a shift from consuming alone, which is where we kind of ended um, this era of consumption, uh, to participating together. Right. Mm -hmm. So we now, and it's part of the way kids are taught at school today is they do things in groups as exercises. Mm -hmm. They never do stuff mm -hmm. alone. I think there's some downsides to that because no one ever fails. And so that's not a good thing. It's good to learn to fail so that you, <laughs> when real life hits, you know. But that's the way people have been taught today. And it's been in place for, you know, uh, probably 10 plus years by now. I'm not sure how long. But that's, um, so then really, if, the, if people learn together, why not participate together? And I think, mm -hmm. The idea of shared readings and participative experiences around card decks is just emerging. We're re and, and digital is a fantastic platform, and, and we're definitely going to embrace that wholeheartedly with Deckable. Um, so, you know, excited. card decks. <laughs> eh? excited, excited. Yeah, excited. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so, card decks, and well, I haven't mentioned creators here, but by definition, the creator and the readers create experiences, right? But and you nailed it before in, in, in your introduction, is the only person who adds meaning is you, right? Mm -hmm. You could get 27 readings in a day from 27 of the best people around the world that do that. And the only person that's actually going to make any of those readings mean something to you is you. You translate mm -hmm. what they say and, and you carry those thoughts and, and inspirations and feelings with you. So um, I think that's really important because... The whole idea is that these experiences move you to have thoughts and emotions and feelings to help you shift, right? So I think that's really important. And, you know, <laughs> little reminder, don't forget experiences create longer memories, right? So that's important oh, that we have these it. experiences, right? We stand the elephant on its head. Um, and then with Deckable, our vision really is uh, one of abundance, right? We we believe there is, I mean, Bill Gates said this for, for computers, we want to put a computer in every home. And, and, and our vision is really simple, to put a deck in every pocket, because right now I don't believe, um, well, I know that the, the percentage of people that have card decks or into card decks are very small. There are two sets of people in card into card decks, which I'm very happy to have identified. There's the whole spiritual tarot oracle community, but there's also an equal amount of fanatics uh, in the business community who use card decks for coaching and for decision making and strategy and ideation. And it was the it was when I identified both those two groups and both those groups speak to me, right? So I'm like, oh, I love that. The intersection of those two things. That was when the idea of building Deckable became so clear to me that card decks, that you play with a card deck. You see the word I just used, play? We don't it almost suggests it's a game. Even if it's serious, we feel playful. Um, if I said to you, let's play with a tax form, <laughs> you'd probably like shrink mm -hmm. up inside. We're just saying tax form. You think, ugh. But if you say card deck, you, you feel positive. So um, that's our, our vision. And what we've done is fused two things together, and um, business and spiritual. And, and I, I just call it the genius at the end. We could have done one or the other. No, nope, we chose to do both. And... The weird thing is, is actually, and I love this expression, steal with pride, is we have stolen with pride from tarot the idea of spreads. We, we don't call them spreads in, in Deckable. We call them layouts. Um, and the reason we do that is because some people are, you know, the, the language of tarot for some people is, is challenging. They don't appreciate it. They don't like it. And I'm like, okay, we don't need to, we don't need the language. We just like the feature set that, that spreads bring. <laughs> Because spreads are simply a way of structuring questions. They guide you through a process of draw these cards and answer these questions as you go. And that's a really a wonderful self-introspection and collaborative introspection experience that a spread brings you. And, and like in the business domain, we don't call them spreads. We would call them, you know, SWOT analysis is a four-card spread, strengths, weakness, opportunities, and threats. The Boston Consulting Group cash cow matrix is a spread. Right? 
but they don't call it that. They call it a matrix or a quadrant. Mm -hmm. And we've just recognized that and pulled that into Deckable. So we support that. The other side of the fence is we support card sorting where you group cards together and make choices and prioritize and rank and ideate. And we do that really, really well. We do both really well, quite honestly. I mean, you, you mentioned uh, in our, in our, on our chat yesterday, you know, if you've not tried Deckable and you haven't tried to go through these two experiences, and if you haven't um, used uh, other decks, to, other apps to try and do these, the apps are very rigid and very stale and very flat and not tactile. Uh, and Deckable really excels at bringing both of these together and making it super tactile because you can really touch the cards. I mean, honestly, I, I personally believe that the, using the deck is more tactile than a physical deck, right? Because you can pinch and zoom and size cards. You can make mm -hmm. some cards bigger and smaller. That to me is really exciting. Um, so that's really our mission. And, you know, I there are 500 and uh, almost 600 decks on Deckable. And I, I really struggled to pick them. So I, I, I made myself not pick them to show what to show you, but I made uh, a 14 second movie uh, just to flick you through the seven different uh, genres of card deck that we kind of visualize and think about on Deckable. Um, it, it's, it's, it's an amazing <laughs> challenge to have that on Deckable, I have to think about which cards, which decks to showcase. And, and <laughs> this was a wonderful way of um, assembling, you know, without boring you to death, there was, you know, 500 and plus amazing decks on Deckable. And, you know, Steve Jobs was very famous for saying, uh, you know, there's an app for that. Right? And we honestly believe there is a deck for that. Um, it's my personal estimate, and this estimate keeps going up, um, but I believe there are 100,000 unique card decks in the world today and rising. Um, that is an English-only estimate. So the number is actually bigger than that, but we're just focusing on that for now. But we, we actually do have multilingual and bilingual decks on Deckable. So we're very um, supportive of that. And if anyone in the audience wants to create a deck and bring it to Deckable, bring it on. Um, there are plenty of people at this conference who are illustrators, creators, coaches who can help you through that process and guide you to bring in your deck to Deckable. We'd welcome you, and I'm more than happy to have a chat with anyone that wants to do that. Um, this get in is, there. yeah, totally. <laughs> if you have this a is, deck, get in there. <laughs> absolutely, uh, and honestly, I, I'm a, I'm. A, a, I invent things for a living, and I've published my own board game. And previous to this, I'd always thought everyone had a book inside them. And I nearly wrote a book. And I wrote nine tenths of a book and got bored. And <laughs> But I published a board game. And I've, I've also now created several decks on Deckable. And I honestly believe, because people come and tell me this, is I think everyone has a card deck and a game and a book inside them. It's just whether they choose to bring it out, right? Whether they have the time, the attention, the passion for that. But I think people have that. And so this is our, you know, and I... I thank Tonya for reminding me that, that this is a globally inclusive community of creatives, of artists, of thinkers, of, I don't know what to call people, mindful folk, right? People who care about self-care and personal growth and lifelong learning, Those are that's our community on Deckable. We have a thousand plus creators who've signed up. We have, we're you know, approaching 600 decks. And our vision is all decks always one app, right? Um, and you can see there the little seven seven segments that I showed you as I went through my mm -hmm. little movie. Those are the seven types of decks that exist. And so tarot and oracle is just a, you know is a, is a sub segment or a, a part of that. And 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 tarot and oracle decks actually are finding their way into the workplace at this point, right? which is really <laughs> fascinating to me. But they definitely are. There are there are business coaches that have created tarot decks, and we have a bunch of those on Deckable. Um, and you know, just it's just fascinating. I I discover new card decks every week. I discover card decks from creators who are a massive following that I didn't even know about. Um, I can name you three creators with a million followers, not on Deckable yet, but they've all pro produced a, a card deck in the last year or two years because they see they've heard and noticed the trend of how card decks are are on the rise, right? So our vision really for Deckable is to provide wellness for life in your pocket. Uh, on your phone, on your tablet, and your desktop. And, and Deckable Desktop isn't isn't with us yet, but it's not too far off. So uh, that's our full vision. Um, we're excited. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So how am I doing for time? Let me check. Six, I got fifteen minutes to go. Okay, I think we're doing okay. I think we're yeah, doing. Yeah, you're okay. fine. You're fine. Don't All mess right. up. You can no, even I'm go all the time. 
That's why these yeah. talks are programmed to be 40 minutes okay. so that we yeah, yeah. know that until the next one we have another half hour. So, you know, take your time. Oh, okay. And we oh, to, to have you showcase what, what you know. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I'm, how I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm just trying to be respectful of the time, but I'm, I'm, I'm okay. making good good time way here. So, and also we can leave time for Q&A if anyone wants to. And I can also dive Absolutely. in and do, I can also dive in and do live demos of Deckable. Um, so, you know, it's time to show, not tell, right? Uh, so here's showtime. Um, and so um, with Deckable, you know, we've created, we haven't just digitized the deck, all right? Because I think that's what pe previous people have done. Is yeah, they've, exactly. digitized, they've just said, oh, let's make the deck digital. And it ends up on a phone and it's sterile and flat and boring. And you touch it once and you go, eh. Um, and you know, I won't name names, but there are plenty of people. There are plenty of people out there that have done that, and and they, and they serve a they serve a purpose, right? And if you haven't seen anything better, you don't realize how bad they are. But as a technologist, I looked at them and went, eh, really?" Um, and so, what we've created with Deckable is is totally unique and totally. Um, we we began from the ground up to say this will be mobile first, so it works on a mobile phone, but it's absolutely going to be multi deck. Um, and by multi-deck, I mean, we can do readings from more than one deck at once, right? Because that is so fun. People want that. I don't know if you, I don't know if you've, anyone's heard of the, um, there's a deck out there called, um, oh my God, I'm going to, brain is going to like not decide not to tell me the name of this deck. Um, oh God. Jeez, now it's really gone. Ah, I'll come back to it in a minute, but there's a deck that was crowdsourced. Oh. On Kickstarter, it sold 20,000 copies. It was the biggest deck on Kickstarter ever, uh, the biggest tarot deck. And it was from 130 decks. So it was oh, this that, crowd. The Aliman tarot. The Aliman, thank you. Yeah, I knew. Yeah, I knew I'm it. a subscriber. I have that deck. It's amazing. Right, right. I, I, I have it. <laughs> I, I had his previous, um, he has a, a set of tarot dice, which are yeah. wonderful. And I have yeah. those too. Um, and so that deck, it proves that people want to do mixed deck readings because every reading from that deck is by definition a mixed deck reading. And the group was so passionate, they were mailing each other cards from, they were breaking up a solid deck to mail cards to different people so that they could create a mixed deck because they couldn't wait for the production of the, the game, the, the deck to actually arrive. And we, I discovered that as we were beginning to design Deckable, and I was like, oh my God, we're really onto something here. So we, we already plan to do mixed deck readings, but you'll see that in a second because it's pretty damn cool. So let's um, let's just draw a card. So I'm going to click on the first one. There's a little short video clip here, and I click on there, and I'm going to choose uh, a card at random, and there it is. It's chosen the card. And you can see how I can pinch and zoom that card. I can flip it over to the second side, to the third side, and back to the first side. Um, so you know that, and now I can journal on it. I just click on that and I can type from the keyboard or I can also talk to my phone and it will um, transcribe my words into text. Um, so that is really the, the, the building block of Deckable is you can pick a deck, you can pick a card at random, you can choose cards, you can see I can do that really, really well. But we discovered that the most common use case for card decks from people who use card decks is just give me a random card. Give me my card of the day, and then I want to get on my way. Do that quick, and so that's what we provided. We do a quick. We call it quick draw, and it gives you one, two, or three cards at random, and you're off and running. And um, in 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 the future version of Deckable, we're going to make it even easier because you're going to we're going to allow creators to turn off options so that there's less choices because that's how they want their deck to be used. So we think that's fun, Ooh, and, that. and asked for by people. So uh, the second uh, example is um you'll see that oh just a minute backwards you're gonna have to watch that one again i'll stop that okay and so here we are i'm gonna do a card sort which is where we basically choose some cards from the deck and i shuffle the deck and you know shuffle in deckable is very tactile it's fun you can stop the shuffle so you influence influence the shuffle i flip the cards over and shuffle it again because well you can do that with a real deck so you should be able to do it with deckable and then I just drag the cards onto the canvas. And there I am, I've got two cards on the canvas and I can move them around, I can flip them over, I can journal on them, I can go and drag more cards onto the canvas at any point, right? And I'm probably gonna, yeah, there we go. I'm just gonna lay them out as a grid, but I can flip them over, move them around. 
it, it really is super tactile and fun, right? And then I am back. I'm back to my timeline. You'll see more of the timeline in a minute, but it, it saves every reading. So you don't have to remember what cards you did, what cards you drew, how you arrange those cards, because they will it will remember exactly how you laid them out. It will remember your journal. Uh, and then the third the third piece that I want to show you here is, is the meditation. And um, it's basically just set a timer. Draw a card, set a timer, and it counts you down through that process. So that's very, very simple. So you've got journaling, meditating, shuffling, um, card sorting you've seen there. And then, um, card, well, card that was very light card sorting because that was just choosing cards. Let me show you a full-blown card sort. Now, if anyone's not aware of what a card sort is, it's when you take a deck that's full of choices. So this, I'm going to, I'm going to show you. I'm using the values jam deck, and in this deck, it's basically sixty odd values, and you can choose what, what are your top values. Well, I can tell you from experience, I have changed my values. My girlfriend and I had some challenges around that, and we had lots of conversations, and, and I've, and I reprioritized my values based on that, and it was because of using Deckable that I realized, a, I knew what my values were. And B, that I was recognized that perhaps we should change them because we compared our values. And I was like, oh. So I've added relationship to my values as a consequence of this. And I, I, I am like the biggest evangelist of whether you have deckable or not, everyone should have a values deck, a strengths deck, and emotions deck because they will help you live a happier life. If you want to make it easy, you can have it on deckable or you can go to the store and, and buy all these decks. It's great too. But values, strengths, and, and emotions are core decks. So let's watch this. And, oh, just a minute. Yeah, I put them in the wrong order. Uh -huh. So uh, watch the, the first screen. And as I'm, I'm picking some cards, and I'm dragging the cards onto the into my... So these are values that I'm choosing. And, and then I just lay out the values. And I'm like, well, I only need three. So how am I going to choose them? And so I'm grouping them together. And I'm saying, oh, curiosity and creativity are kind of similar. Um, generosity, well-being, maybe. Uh, and so I'm grouping them down, trying to whittle down what are my top priorities. And I ended up with four cards. And you can see I can now prioritize those and make them bigger and smaller than each other. So that was a, that was a very fast run through. But um, that's how you do a card sort in a card. And you can do it with a, card, a physical card deck. Um, and typically what happens when you do a card sort is you always choose too many cards. So you may have 60 to choose from, you end up with 20, then you have to get it down to 10, and then you're down to five, and then down to three, because, and, and then I would live for, for, for two months with, um, with those values and say, is that true? Am I living to my values? And if every day, once you've resolved what your values really are, if every day you live to your values, you will live a happier life, I pretty much guarantee it. Um, I love that. Really yeah. cool. Just a minute. I just went. Oh, we go. Okay. So I'm going to go. I'm going to have to go back as I clicked all the things in the wrong order there. Sorry. <laughs> just a minute. There we go. Okay. Here we go. So now I'm doing. Um, let me do. Oh, this was a mixed reading. Sorry. Let me start again. I was taken by. I was, um, so as I do a mixed reading, first I'm picking one card at random from one deck. And now watch this. I'm just going to stop there. And I, all, I, all I did there was choose. I pause this just a moment. So don't, don't watch the, the third one. Damn. Oh, I'm making a mess of this. Uh, <laughs> the, so let me start again. The, here we go. We can do so many things. That's yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just, so here one, I've picked one card and then I've chosen, I flipped. Um, switch deck and now I've got a different deck and I'm choosing a card from that deck so now I've got a card from two decks that's a two card mixed reading I choose change deck again I pick a third deck I flip the cards over I slide down the list and choose a card and drag that onto the canvas I've got three cards now I add a third card a fourth card now I choose deck again pick my fourth deck and, and I drag my card on. And now I've got a four card reading and I'm just gonna lay those out like that, right? So that's insanely challenging and super annoying in real world because you'd have to unshuffle all those cards afterwards, right? Having mixed them together. <laughs> but with Deckable, it's ridiculously easy. And I made it look quite complicated because I clicked through 
did that all wrong, but anyway. Um, the Dunlist. And, steady, and, and, and Decavel is, is keeping track of all of this for me. Yeah, so totally. Tomorrow totally, it will yeah. still be there and I can go and have a yeah. look at it. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. I really love that. And then the final screen, the final screen of the three is the done list, which is basically like, I strongly believe that when you're climbing to a metaphoric Everest, the most important thing is a done list, because when you get to base camp and you're like, I'm exhausted, I'm done, I'm not doing it, I can't do it anymore. You look back and you go, oh, I've come quite a long way. And, and that's what a done list is. Like people are focused on their to-do list, but I think there is as much, if not more value in building healthy habits with a done list. And that's what Deckable's timeline is because every reading, every draw from a card is absolute proof that you turned up and did your personal self-care that day. I drew a card, I reflected, I journaled, I meditated, whatever it is, it's all there in Deckable. Um, so if I click on that, you'll see, yeah, it's, I can really scroll down each day. Every one of those is clickable. Uh, I can open up the reading and You'll see here's the reading and I just go arrange those cards and now I could change my mind. I can, I'm going to throw away a couple of cards that I want those anymore. So those cards are dropped and deleted out, out of my reading. And now I've reduced my cards down to nine and that was it. I love down. that. I love that it, it can, you know, we were telling, I was telling the opening address about the cards tell our stories, right? Uh, but this is literally your story is there to be right. kept because when you do mostly if right. you try to do a, a random with four decks then you have to put the cards back in each deck right so <laughs> never ever Ooh. get that right. opportunity again whereas there we can have uh, i can reflect back on my life on my year and see how you know what what happened to me kind of almost because we've got yep. the journaling everything it's amazing amazing i'm you know um, I did a video this morning saying Autoloco loves Deckable, and I mean that. We love you. Thank you for creating that for us thank card you. lovers and artists. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so what next? Oh, tarot spreads. Okay, so this is, we are at a tarot and oracle lovers conference. So spreads are really important. And as I mentioned before, spreads are really simply what I call structured questioning, right? So this is the Zodiac spread. We actually have... Um, the Astro Tarot deck uh, on Deckable, <laughs> which is was actually the person who created um, the Zodiac spread. His original deck is on Deckable. Um, so that's pretty, pretty amazing. It's called Astro Tarot. And I met him this summer. It was really amazing at the Tarot uh, Tabby conference in the UK. Anyway, uh, moving along, you can pick a spread. There are multiple spreads available on every deck. Um, and if you're a deck creator, you can create your own spread uh, and choose that. And then basically uh, you can drag cards from the deck into the spread and you drop the cards. You can see that I'm dropping cards onto the spread. But you can also use what we call quick draw, which is an option to fill in the card at random. And so let, let Deckable draw the card for you if that's what you want. You can you can choose the cards or let Deckable draw them. And then when you filled in when you filled in the spread, you just reveal and that flips over the card. So um, that's pretty cool. The, and then um, there is a tool called Spread Designer uh, on Deckable, which is a tool for creators. And so all of these spreads were created on Deckable, um, and you. Literally, it's very simple just to drag and drop and move these cards around. I was, I meant, I forgot to mention, Russell Grant was the name um, of the guy that created the Astro Tarot deck. And he was this uh, famous astrologer on, on British TV when I grew up. And uh, mm -hmm. he's, he's still still alive and kicking. And he, he'd, had a, he'd had a brain tumor and he hadn't done anything for three or four years. And he's now, I saw him this summer. He was amazing. Such a great storyteller and so passionate about all the things he's done with the card with tarot and oracle was amazing fascinating okay so that's spreads and and you know if you create a deck you can create your own spreads i think it's definitely our intention that we will actually move this feature into the app so if you're a reader you'd be able to create your own um spreads for any decks you've bought and then um because that's that's important that's a very kind of personalized experience right spreads are very very personal and so yeah that's where we are but we're, we're totally kind of embracing we really want to embrace readers um, and supporting readers so that we can help readers make a living on deckable as well 
uh, because we think that's a there's various you know you can actually buy a reading from a reader on Etsy, which I think is just the strangest um, notion. But yeah, there's not really a, a real solid leader of a of a kind of place to go and book a reading um, on the internet. So well, yeah, something thinking something to think about. Um, and so what I'm showing, what I've been showing you today is the new uh, workflow on Deckable. This is the next release that we will be releasing on um, December the 15th. And it's um, got a, a much simpler workflow. And um, it, it, it just, just from feedback, we listen to people how they want to use it. So when you, whenever you draw a reading and you drag a card, uh, you, when when the cards are on the canvas, you're in canvas mode, and you'll see that's the gray menu. And um, and at that point, you can you know hit the plus button and drag more cards onto the canvas. Uh, as soon as they drop onto the canvas, if you touch the card, you pop out of canvas mode into card mode. As soon as one card is in focus, you can see which card is in focus. You can flip it over. You can zoom on that card. You can. Um, read the guidebook on that card you can watch a video on that card uh etc but when you're just when you're on canvas mode um, you can journal share flip etc so it's it's just it's amazing to be in the position room with deckable because you know we definitely don't think what we have is perfect we're iterating and we're getting a lot of feedback from a lot of people which then you know puts us in a, a wonderful position to be able to create a better product and all the way along, we're gathering more decks. And the more decks we have, um, the more feedback we get, and the more valuable it becomes to more people. Because the more people are on Deckable, the more card decks we have, the more valuable. It's a bit like a phone system, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Phones become more valuable when everyone has a phone. Uh, and when everyone's on Deckable, you know, the decks become more accessible and more readers are on Deckable. Um, because you can do a reading for someone, but if they're on Deckable, you could share the reading to them, right? So, mm -hmm. you because instead of taking horrible photos of the reading, which got shiny light and shadow, and you know, you get a picture perfect, pixel perfect uh, recall of the cards on Deckable. So that's kind of fun. Um, really so that's cool. the that's the new UX, and then um, yeah, and not to uh, I thought about some predictions and prophecies for the card deck industry. Um, Can I just because, interrupt because we, we, yeah. we got a break. you got loads of comments, of course, that you okay. cannot read, but um, globally a lot of love coming your way and the deckable way. But one Thank thing uh, that somebody said, she said, uh, it's like an accountability buddy for my self care, and I Ooh, think like that's that. amazing. I thought you'd yeah. like it. Thank but you. Yeah, I might, in, I... in general, people are very enjoying your talk and Thank and you. deckable as a whole, and learning new things about how deckable can. Um, interfere Thank with you. their life, basically. Interfere, <laughs> interfere. Hopefully not interfere, but get your point. Um, yeah. So I thought I'd, I'd make some predictions about and prophecies about the card deck industry. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. I just thought I'd throw out some thoughts. But um, I think there's going to be more diversity, more themes, um, more more card decks created. I, honestly, I think of tarot is the biggest meme, the oldest meme of all time. Yeah, it, it's got some yeah. structure to it. So people copy it. That's the definition of a meme, right? People copy and repeat something, but then they vary it slightly. And I think that's why it's, I mean, this has been going on since the 14, 1500s, right? It's the, it's the longest, <laughs> oldest meme of, his, of all time. And it's actually getting bigger and better now because of the digitalization of everything, because of Canva, because of print on demand, because of Kickstarter, right? So we think that's just going to grow. We have some amazing diverse decks on Deckable, by the way. Um, I'll get to, I think I might get to show those by the end of this. Um, and then um, we also think there's going to be more big names coming to the deck industry. And we also think that's a kind of top-down thing. It's like we think cele more celebrities are going to go, oh, I should have a deck. Let me do that. But there's also going to be grassroots tarot stars rising up and becoming mainstream TV celebrities. That's the prediction. Uh, you heard it here first. Um, we think okay. there's definitely going to be more creators and more creations. Um, and that's because we think people are going to create personal decks. You could create it just, you know, there are card, you know, there are books you can create for your partner of a, of a, a, a memoir or something, right? And I think people will be creating personalized decks, um, decks on demand. And because of AI, because of, um, you know, you may have a hate, 
love-hate relationship with AI, right? But um, AIs can do so much to help anyone create a deck, and then you know, and if they want to take it to market, they can, right? Yeah. Um, I call it the Spotification <laughs> because it's like we look to Spotify as what happened with Spotify is going to happen, you know, to decks, and decks are the last medium if you like, that's not gone digital to this point. And, you know, I, I was a very resistant um, adopter of Spotify because I loved all the things I had, but eventually, you know, the radio station feature got to me. I'm like, okay, this is too good. I can't, I can't ignore <laughs> this. And I, and I moved, right? And I think mixed readings is going to be a big trigger for people. And uh, I think I can totally see Deckable doing a kind of Shazam feature um as, as we get more decks on deckable people will say you know what I, you, if you follow the forums on on tarot and oracle there's a lot of people saying which decks this from and the people show an image right and that result result re relies on human knowledge so oh, that's from this deck from 1973 right um but there's no reason why a, a digital platform couldn't do that really really well so that i think is really interesting um, and i think uh, and you mentioned this <laughs> in your comments there's going to be more media we're going to have more integration with music, video, with Spotify, um, song pairing is going to be a thing, right? So, um, yeah, just some of the trends that I see with Deckable. And then, um, so, we you know, we are super deep supporters for what you're doing here, and I, I'm really delighted to hear that you're going to, you know, run a second and subsequent and third and fourth um, Otoloka because I really think the industry needs it. I think uh, I think it's a wonderful a wonderful cause. So I was you know very happy to support it. So we are offering um, a free deck to anyone who uh, is signed up to Otoloco, and you get to, um, uh, on Deckable from the next release. You can test drive any deck for free for three days uh, before you buy it. But in addition to that, um, uh, after the fifteenth of December, because that's when the next release comes out, and that's where we that's what we're gifting you the these decks for anyone can go to deckable and choose a deck and then use this special coupon um, to redeem that deck and you can only use one you can only use that coupon once um, so we may offer this subsequently to other people um, but you will only ever be able to get one one-time offer deck um, you we will specify a limit on each deck so there will be a kind of out of stock idea because we, we thought it was unfair if everyone just dived in and picked one particular creator's deck. So we're spreading the gifting across all decks. So uh, when you get your token, um, if you know what, you know, someone we suggest you go and look at the decks you want and and choose those in advance or buy some of the decks in advance, but know you can get the, the extra deck you want uh, from the 15th. Um, you know, if you are a deck support, a deck lover, buying a deck is supporting a creator, and it's also supporting Deckable, uh, because you know this is a very big project to undertake. I'm really happy to say we've had we've had our best month yet, and our traction and momentum is really really good, and it's only going to get better from here. I'm sure of that, um, because we've you know we've tackled a very hard problem, and we haven't just built a piece of software; we've actually populated it with you know nearly 600 decks, and that's really quite. Uh, quite a serious achievement. Um, so yeah, you can get your free deck after the 15th, once with this new release, uh, and, uh, and after the 15th, you'll be able to test drive and, and um, try any deck for free for three days, um, because up to this point, we haven't had that feature, so that's kind of cool. That's um, an amazing feature. Yeah, but, no, I think know, so. That, that does mean that we're going to be buying more, you know that. You know it, could be. it could be well, <laughs> because you know you know us card addicts <laughs> right there we go there we go and so and um, we've updated our deckable website um so we now you know describing ourselves as the premier marketplace for digital decks we are all about daily practice um turning up every day drawing a card meditating journaling uh, and then you know i love that the, the you know your accountability buddy but i also encourage you find another accountability beyond buddy on deckable who can be a double supporter for your for your daily practice right i think yeah, that's, that's important that. um and then the last thing was like um because i these are all our our poc decks people of color decks on deckable um there's a special spot saved at the end there for the you know if you have one bring it along we would more than happily welcome 
uh, more decks on Deckable. So cool. Um, and I, there's them, uh, the 52 questions deck is great. I know the social balance deck is cool. Return is cool. Uh, oh, I love modus operandi. I, I, it's, it's so like they're all cool, and I've had the pleasure of meeting all of these people. Um, That's I'm what I wanted draw... to say earlier on. You said when you buy a deck, you buy you support an artist, but Deckable yeah. as a whole supports artists, and we that totally do. Yeah. is really important because yeah. in, in the in the industry, very often the artist is the last person. Right, um, totally you know, true. Kind of turned, you know, and... first there is a publisher. Then there's right. maybe an author who writes the deck, and then we hire an artist. But here right. we have uh, the possibility for any artist to be um, showcased. And um, thank you for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then just I'm going to show two two decks in particular: um, the Black Goddess deck, uh, Dr. Giovanni Washington. She's 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 now got her deck, and a second version of this deck is is published with Hay House, and that's out in a couple of weeks' time. Um, collaborative deck where she basically did all these photo shoots with uh, real people from real life and then photoshopped them in into these amazing backdrops. Um, amazing. That's a pretty cool deck. And then I love the um, uh, Laura Lom uh, Lomax's deck, the mirrors, windows and doors. It's all about um, inclusion. And the, the deck is all these different scenarios of how you might or might not consider inclusion, like your example of going, I didn't realize there wasn't you know, uh, a, a speaker of color, it was an accidental situation because you just didn't think of it through that lens. And this deck mm -hmm. is all about teaching people the different ways that we have cultural variety uh, and, and how we might misinterpret a situation because we haven't got the cultural lens that somebody else might bring. Right? So uh, I think these are both uh, fun and interesting decks to have on the platform. So. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, amazing. Can I ask a question? It's not mine. It's Kelly uh, who's asking. Can we actually, right now or in the future, connect with other deckable buyers? So, can we in the app connect with other people? Oh, and yeah. Um, what change? when you when you publish your deck, you can send. Oh, no, out... no, no. She, I think she meant as a buyer, as a, as a uh, not as a creator of a deck, just as a user. Oh, okay. Right, right, right. Um, we haven't implemented that, but you can. To every creator has all their social links on uh, so yeah. from the deckable deck there is a link to the creators page we we totally insist that the creators have a full bio there um depending on the creator's um level of celebrity i guess um those uh, those people are more or less accessible i i kind of think most of our creators are very accessible at this point so I would say yes, uh, and if, if there's one particular you want to reach out to, I'll try and connect you, but we, we totally aspire to. We can't go giving out email addresses because of all of the uh, legal restrictions that we have these days, but I would do my best to create, connect anyone with, with a creator if, if they would so wished, yeah. I mean, that's, that's the spirit and the community of what we're trying to create, right? is I think, I think many of our creators want to actually have those connections. And... You know, one of the two things that we are planning in the future of Deckable, um, one is challenges, uh, which is, you know, we've all seen 30 day challenges, seven day challenges, 100 mm -hmm. day challenges, right? That is a perfect fit for Deckable, um, for a card deck, yeah. for your card deck, to you, for you to run a challenge with your audience. Uh, and so we are adding, we're going to be adding some features to support that in a future release. And beyond that, we're going to create what we call membership decks which is decks that give you access to the creator as part of a community with other people who are also a supporter of that deck. So we think that's very exciting. Um, and another way to support, you know, rather than an artist just selling you a deck once, you get to support an artist on a monthly basis and be part of their community. So we think that's cool. Well, so many new things are coming. And I mean, Deckable is already amazing. And it's getting better by the minute. So I'm really excited. Thank you very, very much, Nick, for sharing awesome. with us. We are um, very late. So <laughs> I'm going to have to say goodbye to you. Thank you very much. The, if you have any questions for Nick uh, or uh, around Deckable, please use the live panels for that, maybe. 
uh, or you know, if you ask your questions in the comments uh, under this chat, this um, video, uh, Nick can access that. Also, Nick being a sponsor or Decable being a sponsor, they have a page uh, on our website, uh, on the Autolocal website, and you can there, they have a booth, so you can go and ask your questions to Nick directly, and he will get that by email and will answer to you at any point. So um, I'm s really sorry for not having more time for Q&A, Nick, but I'm really excited right. that you had full time to present Decable because even with all this, I think um, it's still not. Go and play with it. Le really, <laughs> right, right. go and play with it. Uh, it's right. even better than what you think it is for now. <laughs> um, and so, I did. I was just. I did demonstrate the new version. Not that's not out. The one that's out from the fifteenth. Everything. Yeah, everything I showed you today that. was from that. Yeah, yeah. So you there'll be subtle that, differences. Right. Yeah. No, we'll be all right. <laughs> we'll be all right. We'll, sure we'll make yeah. some patience up until the new <laughs> versions. But I also love that because it's it me. You know, it's it's a work in progress, and we can be there from now on and participate. Right. And he can even give feedback. So it's amazing. Thank Amazing. You. Thank you very, very much for all the support. Thank you for explaining Decable to each and every one of us. And I will talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye for now. Bye.